Okay, FAQ number 98. The question comes up, should Christians judge if other people are saved? Good question. Um, and the answer to that is yes, I do believe so. Let me explain why. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. You can go there, 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 2 verse 12. It says here, Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God, which things also we speak, not in the wisdom which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Okay? But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. Did it say all things except for people's salvation there? No. It says, He that is spiritual judgeth all things. Um, brethren, we live in a time, most of us, in countries where judging somebody else's salvation is not going to mean life or death for you. But you go to some country where you have somebody that could be faking you out, looking for Christians so that they can put them to death, uh, you better judge their salvation. You live in an Islamic country and you yourself are saved and somebody comes over and he goes, I'm a Christian. Or Do you know of any Christians in the area? You don't say, oh yeah, come on, I'll show you all of them or something. Or I'll give you a list of all the names. You say, okay, uh, you say you're a Christian. What does that mean? you got to play the game with them. You know, Until you know that, that person is genuinely saved, you're not going to be telling them anything. See? Uh, but the, the purpose of this question is you, you look at people and you say, is this person saved? And you go, well, I don't know. Um, and it gets very difficult at times. I mean, majorly difficult. Let me show you another scripture here. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Um, we'll start at verse 1. It says here, Dare any of you having a matter against another go to law before the unjust and not before the saints? Do ye not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Know ye not that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? Okay, and it's talking about, you know, saved people going to law, taking each other before the law to handle problems. And Paul's saying, hey, you need to be judging among yourselves. But how much more important is it to say, is this person genuinely saved? And it's not about saying, I'm going to set up a bunch of standards and you have to meet those standards, uh, my standards that I've raised. No, I mean, there are people, I understand the thing of carnal Christians. I really do. Some people don't think I understand that, but I do. You know, but you have to be careful. It's very important to be careful, right? To just, not just go out and say, you know, the Bible talks about laying hands suddenly on no man, neither be partaker of other men's sins, keep thyself pure. Right? You don't just go out and go, boom, that guy's, oh, he's a Christian. You can, you can rely on that brother over there. And I've done that. I've done that. I used to recommend uh, Edward Fenninger, Edward PF123. I don't recommend him anymore. Uh, I saw problems early on. Early on, I saw some things and I'm going, wait a second here. This sounds like a false gospel. And then he kind of flip flops and he's, and he's, doing this stuff and the guy's got you know boxing and football and stuff like this playlists profanity i mean it's one thing if you're watching it that's bad enough it's another thing if you're putting playlists on your channel to send people to watch it he's not a christian you hear his testimony it's i got saved as a very young child in the catholic church while in the catholic church because all i heard is you just believe in jesus died for your sins and that's it uh, well i really hate to tell you it doesn't quite work that way. Okay, first of all, if you're beyond, if you're younger than the age of accountability where you really understand what sin is and understand what it means to sin against a holy, righteous God, you're not going to be truly saved. Secondly, saying it's only believe, well, how does that work? Most people believe that Jesus died on the cross. And a lot of people say that they believe he died for their sins. But you look at their life, you look at what they do, they're not Christians. And yes, you can judge that way. Again, you have to judge that way. It's just, these people are mentally sick, I'll tell you what. And they're lost. You know. But you say, well, did Paul ever do that? Did Paul ever question people's salvation? Well, absolutely. 1 Corinthians 
chapter 15, verses 1 and 2. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. And these false prophets will come along and they'll say, well, it's talking about the resurrection. That's not what it's talking about. It's talking about the gospel in that context. People can believe the gospel in vain. They haven't given up themselves yet. They haven't just said, I'm just a wicked sinner. I'm just, you know, horrible. I'm a terrible person. They haven't been broken. All right? There's no true repentance there that accompanies that salvation. It's not there. You can believe in vain. Absolutely. It's all throughout the New Testament. You know, Paul talks about it being in perils among false brethren. How can they be false brethren if it's just belief? I mean, it's just, it's crazy. Uh, trying to think of another scripture. Um, I'll leave that one go. Just, I want to keep this thing fairly short. Uh, but, you know, you can even see in the book of Galatians, you can find the scriptures there where he's talking about how he desires to be with him and to change his voice um, because he stands in doubt of them, you know, because they're trying to say they're justified by the law, okay, which I don't teach, by the way, so don't go there. But, um, you know, it, it's, it's been a struggle for me for a very long time. Um, my most recent struggle has been over this issue of Ken Hovind. You know, I look at Ken Hovind and I say, you know, for a long time I was like, oh, he's not only saved, but he's a great man of God. But then you actually start to examine things and you go, why is he standing up for this? And why is he doing that? And then you look at some of his connections and it's like, you know, he's got these really crooked connections and you're going, huh? You know, why is he hooked up to a guy like Ernie Land that's been scamming people out of their money? Um, wouldn't that affect you after a while? You know, uh, why is he recommending a book like The Shack? Why is he saying that it's, if, uh, you know, rock music among Christian youth is, is fine? Um, why is he saying, repeating a lot of Jack Hiles' nonsense of, do you have to repent of every sin that you've ever done in order to repent of your sins? You know, why is he saying stuff like that? And he says that easy believism, he, he leans more that way. And all this other stuff, you know. I want people to understand something. When I question somebody's salvation, I say, I don't think that guy's saved. It's after years and years and years of me watching that person and going, you know, and looking at looking at what they're doing and looking at the doctrines that they're teaching and things like this. That's when I'll start to judge somebody. But I don't just flippantly just go, oh, they're, they're lost because they don't agree with me. I've never done that. All right. Um, I mean, there's some people that are just blatantly obvious like Martin Richling. I mean you can just hear the guy's voice and just see the hatred that emanates from the guy and you, you don't have to wonder for any time at all if the guy's saved. He's lost. All right, He's a perpetual uh, fornicator. Um, I could, had a personal friend of Richling's actually write that to me and, and uh, let me know about that. I mean he just Richling is a very very wicked man. Uh, so should Christians judge if other people are saved? Yes, I do believe so. Um, can we have perfect judgment in that matter? I mean, could some Christian be just so wicked and carnal that they, you know, you end up feeling like, I think if this person's lost in reality that they're saved? That is possible, definitely. I think it is very possible that there are Christians out there that do live very wickedly, and we're going to probably be pretty shocked when we get to heaven and we actually see them there. <laughs> It'll be like, how'd you get here? <laughs> you know? Um, but what's more dangerous for me to say to a Christian like that, I believe you're lost and in reality they're saved. Is that more dangerous than me saying to a lost person, I believe you're saved because you just have a belief and yet they're actually lost. And they have Christians telling them all through the years, oh, you're saved, you're saved, you're, you're, you're a Christian, you're a Christian. Uh, you know, I told this story before and I'll say it one more time here in closing and that is uh, the one time we were out going door to door um, me and some brethren down in Lancaster County and um, one Baptist church we used to go to we'd go out door to door in the Ephrod area and I remember we went to this one guy's house and uh, we said you know if you died today do you know for sure where you would go and he said I'd go to heaven we said how do you know that and he said 
uh, because I'm saved. And we said, well, how do you know you're saved? He said, because that's what my wife's preacher tells me. And, you know, we talked to the guy and it was like, he wasn't saved. And he even, he even admitted to it later on. He's like, I really don't know. He's like, I have no idea. You know, I, I, I just, I go to her church and, and, you know, they just keep telling me I'm a Christian. He wasn't a Christian. He wasn't saved. You know, so um, I think it's very important for us to judge uh, according to Scripture, according to the standards of Scripture. Uh, there's nothing more important in this life than you getting your salvation figured out, making sure that you're saved. Uh, and this teaching of easy believism is just like if you've believed, you're you're in. Don't worry about it. You know, don't even think about it. Don't don't give it a second thought. Uh, that's a that's a foolish philosophy, and uh, certainly not one that comes from the Lord.